Hey, welcome back to The Nexus, where we spotlight some of our favorite local businesses. I'm really excited that we have a fun guest here today. Uh, Jenna Vidosh is the owner of Arrive Coworking, and she's also an Edward Jones advisor, uh, financial advisor. Welcome to the show, Jenna. Thanks for having me, Renee. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm really excited for everyone to get to know you a little bit better and see your serious side and your fun side <laughs> all wrapped in a fun little bow. So. Definitely have both. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and like your background and maybe how you got to where you are today. Yeah. So I uh, grew up in Nebraska, been a Nebraska girl my whole life and, um, you know, thought from a very young age that I really kind of wanted to do my own thing, own my own business, kind of call my own shots. Yeah. Um, thought that I wanted to do that as an architect or an engineer. Right. So uh, I actually went to college at UNL and studied civil engineering and architecture. Yeah. Uh, with the intention of running my own business, stamping all my own drawings, doing my own thing. And I got out into the real world and just, man, it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just wasn't a, it wasn't a good fit for me. You know, yeah. I, I love talking to people. I love being out and doing things. And it was a lot of time behind a computer. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of hours. You know, architects, I think people don't realize unless you're in that world, work a lot of hours. Yeah, they really do. And I, it just wasn't a good fit. Yeah. It wasn't a good fit for me. And so. It's kind of like being a lawyer almost. It's just. Yeah, it's one of those long, careers. intensive, working on the same project. Got to put a lot of effort yeah. and energy in yeah. to do that. And so I, I just thought, man, this isn't, this isn't right for me. I got to find something else to do. So um, my dad is a financial advisor and I grew up, you know listening to him talk about stocks and bonds at the dinner table um actually worked part-time for him in college and i, I thought that. yeah That's yeah cool. um so i thought you know i didn't hate that job maybe i'll try that see if that works out for me and uh <laughs> here i am 12 years later yeah and it it definitely worked out it's a it's a much better fit for me and my skill set a lot yeah. more one-on-one -on -one communication with people and um really being able to be creative and, and use that part of my brain um, and problem solve for my clients, but but do it you know in a more person-to-person -person kind of atmosphere. Right, so. and you have a great support network with Edward Jones and- Absolutely. Um, it's a great company, it's been around a long time, great name. And yeah, we're celebrating 100 years this year. Oh, really? Yep. That's really Edward cool. Jones oh, that's gonna be a big years. celebration, I'm sure. It is, we've been you know, celebrating all year and, and definitely excited about where we've come from and where we're going and it's a great yeah. place, great yeah. place to call home. Yeah, and you're so intelligent, I'm sure like your clients really enjoy visiting with you and seeing their money grow, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Well, but that's not all you do, though. You also own Arrive Coworking. So tell us a little bit about um, maybe how that got started and where it's at today. Yeah. So uh, in working with um, my clients and then also just being out in the community and networking, I met a lot of female business owners and heard a lot of the same stories, you know, mm -hmm. about how hard it was to start the business or you know, they're running their businesses from their kitchen tables in yeah. between caring for children or pets or, you know, elderly family members. Um, and really that struggle that a lot of women experience being able to get a business off the ground, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I just got to thinking, you know, how can, what can we do? How can we help solve some of these problems, right? Create a community and a network for women to be able to support each other and help each other grow to create a physical place for them to have the resources that they need, um, mm -hmm. offices that are affordable, they're not locked into long-term leases, things like that, to create some legitimacy and some um, autonomy in yeah. helping them run their businesses. Yeah. Um, and that the idea of Arrive Coworking really was kind of born out of that desire to help. Yeah. Um, I remember going to your first ribbon cutting. Um, you guys have such like a great, look the design is really like open and you know there's a lot of shared spaces for um the women but you grew and you had full offices and you wanted to make more offices right yep. and so um you have a brand new 
beautiful location. Tell us a little bit about that and some of the changes you've made like lately. Yeah. Um, you know, we really found that private office space was, was really one key thing for women to be able to feel like, yes, I've made it. Right, like I have a private office, I have a business address, yes. right? I'm not operating from my kitchen table anymore. Um, and so that really has been kind of our most popular feature to be able to provide women that resource. And so uh, we actually moved to Williamsburg. Uh, we are, our neighbors are Hampton. We're very grateful for that. Um, and they've taken really good care of us there. And we just got done building out a bunch more offices um, and being able to, you know, serve more more people there. Yeah, and it's such like a great um, support system too. Um, there's always like a positive environment. Um, and that's what I love about being in a co-working space is having other business owners kind of going through the same struggles. And so I'm sure there's just some natural um, support and help that people are giving each other there. And it's pretty neat. Um, it is, that kind of environment, you know, we're built off of a traditional co-working structure, right? Where you can drop in and work and use this like a coffee shop. You can have a dedicated desk that belongs to you. You can have private office space. Um, we have conference room availability and things like that. But what makes us a little different from a traditional co-working model is that kind of networking education piece that we yeah. provide, right? An opportunity for people to get together and have coffee and share ideas and share struggles and share successes and, and brainstorm um, education events. You know, mm -hmm. we've, you've spoken recently yeah. and uh, spoken to our community, but we, we bring in lots of local experts and business owners to speak to our members and provide them with education to be able to run their businesses better, yeah. um, be, you know, more full humans, right? Um, all, all of those things, all those aspects. And I think that that really kind of sets us apart. It makes us a little bit different Yeah. Um, to be able to provide all those other features to really help develop that community. Yeah. So it's a safe space for people to feel like, you know, especially women to feel like they can come and get the support they need. Right. And I got a tour of the space yesterday. I had been there, you know, before, but uh, you've made some additional offices and those are going to be beautiful and they're they're a nice big space and you have a few of them still available right we do we have a couple available um we have several we just got access to last week from the build out and a couple more coming soon so we do have one um one wing that is kind of we're calling it our wellness wing yeah it's got a private waiting area for people that see clients or patients back to back um so we've got some mental health professionals there and chiropractor and things like that. So if you know people have that sort of business, yeah, um, that would see someone, a patient kind of clientele back to back. There's that availability, and then we've also just got a lot of private executive suites available for people who you know work by themselves or work with teams and just need a, a private place to be able to shut the door and get stuff done. Um, I I enjoy hearing like personal stories. Do you have any like stories of? women that have come in or or men i know you've had uh, men have offices there too mm -hmm. that um they've either had like a great success or something where some synchron i don't know some whatever you would call it between two businesses where they started like working together on something yeah there's so you know we've been in business now a little over three years and we've definitely seen a lot of collaboration happening um and and sharing of ideas. One a success story that's coming to mind just because it's been recent um, is Gretchen Arroyo with Lux Events uh -huh. was one of my first tenants um, pre-pandemic, moved into uh -huh. our smallest office at the old space and started you know, relaunching her business. She's a transplant from California and ran an oh, event cool. business out there and moved to Nebraska and was kind of relaunching her California business here in Nebraska and started in our smallest office and grew and grew, followed us to the new space, kept growing. And just in the last couple months, um, actually launched and went and rented her own cool. space and has her own storefront now and her own warehouse for um, her event rentals and things. And it's just like, that's the amazing progression yeah. I love to see, right? Not yeah. every business needs a storefront necessarily, but for her to be able to start from that 
you know, that's a little so cool office, what's, see. you know, what can yeah. I do and afford? And to now she's grown to having her own space and her yeah. own storefront, which is awesome. She like graduated. She graduated. <laughs> yes. That's she's a great doing word. It. <laughs> so we, we love to see that and we're so happy for her. Um, she hopes to have a, a ribbon cutting soon and celebrate uh, opening that and we will all be there to cheer her on and support her. Oh, that's super so. cool. That's a great story. Um, you guys have, like you said, education events. Um, mm -hmm. When's the next event and is it open to um, people that are just members or can the public come? Yeah, great question. So all of our events are um, typically members only. But our education events, if you would like to come and just pay for the event, you're welcome to come and attend. Our next one is Courtney Lockridge uh, is speaking on, and I'm going to get the title of her talk wrong now that we're talking about this, work and play. Oh, yeah, and like yeah. how to integrate play into your life, yeah. um, which I think is going to be a great talk. Courtney is a coach and an Enneagram expert, and she's one of our members, and we uh, really love having her there. And so she's going to be talking about that on October 26th. That's awesome. That'll be a good one. That'll be a great one. Yeah. And then um, the next one after that is Amy Harshman. She is a dietitian mm -hmm. um, and going to be focusing on, you know, having a healthy relationship with food, right? So yeah. much of, of our diet um, and that culture is, is toxic yeah. in our environment and how to have a healthy relationship with that in our lives. And so she's going to be speaking in November. Well, those sound awesome. Let's say I don't need actual office space, but I want to kind of be a part of that community and come to the coffees and the education events. You have a membership available for that too, right? We do. It's called our networking membership. Um, and so you can actually join. It's $50 a month and participate in all of the events that we provide at Arrive um, and all the members only stuff that happens there um, every month. So we network once a week and do coffee together as a community. And then we also have the goal is to have two education events a month mm -hmm. um, for them to be able to attend as well. Plus every now and then we do happy hours and things like that after, yeah. after work. And you guys are planning a ribbon cutting since you have uh, the new spaces. Yeah, the and new, the move and the new build out. Um, we're hoping to do a ribbon cutting early November uh, yeah. and invite everybody to, to show up for that. We'll be yeah. doing that with the chamber and uh, yeah, we're real excited about that. Yeah, so you guys should follow her on social um, and then look out for that event so that you can come check out the space and um, especially if you're looking for an office, it yes. would be a great idea to come check it out. Absolutely. Um, so we ha share something in common. We're both Enneagram sevens. You brought up Enneagram. Yes. And um, I love that about you. You're very spontaneous and like to go on adventures. Um, tell us uh, like some things that you've learned from Enneagram uh, that you want to share with the audience. Oh man. So, you know, thanks to, again, Courtney being an expert um, and being able to work with her a little bit in the space, I've learned a lot about myself and others, right? Yeah. And I think the biggest thing you know, for me is learning about the things about me that make me great. They also might be frustrating for some people, mm -hmm. but they're who I am. Yeah. And being able to embrace that. And then the areas where maybe I need help. Yeah. Right. Like I'm uh, often not the most organized <laughs> or <laughs> focused individual. You're laughing, right? I know, you know, I'm relating to You're you. relating. I'm not laughing at you. Uh, laughing with me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, when you think about hiring, right? Like, yeah. Who do I need to hire to fill that gap? Yes. I, you know, I'm so blessed right now. I have a community manager there at Arrive. Nicole is, is very different from me. She's very organized and very on time and very, you know, yeah. And she reliable. pays attention to all the details. Yes. And <laughs> she's a perfect fit for me, you know, and, yeah. and the more I've learned about myself and about other people, um, the easier that's been to make a good hire. Yeah. So we're really blessed to have her there and um, excited for for where Arrive is headed in the future. And oh, I'm definitely excited to see where you guys are going to go. I know you have um, other ideas of even launching like an online community, and that's really exciting to think about that. And um, yeah, I I will always be cheering you on and watching where you go. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. One other thing I like to um, ask people that are on the show, I like asking like, what's your 
favorite book that you've ever read? Oh, gosh. <sighs> or if you read. <laughs> I, I do read, okay. and I do read, and I have read a lot of books. I, I'll be honest with you, I try... Um, I try to read like brain candy when I can, just yeah. like fun books. I'm yeah. super into like historical fiction and stuff like that, um, just to get a break from yeah. life. Um, but when I am reading like self development and work related books, you know, I like to read stuff that really gives me um, some practical tips to help. Because again, I've mm -hmm. got seven, right? So many ideas. Yeah. Right. And, and so many different things and directions so I want to go. So little time. Right. Um, one of the most powerful things I read, and I'm trying to remember uh, who gets the credit for this. I don't know if it's Nora Roberts um, origi originated this idea, but I know Tiffany DeFu wrote a book called Drop the Ball also. But um, this idea that everything in life, you know, I'm a mother, right? Mm -hmm. And and my kids are super important to me, but like everything in life is either glass or plastic balls. Mm -hmm. But not every kid ball is glass, hmm. right? Or not every kid ball is plastic. And same with work, right? Not every work ball is glass and not every work ball is plastic. And so the true, you know, for me, I hate work-life balance. That terminology I think is just baloney, but. Yeah, um, agreed. <laughs> but the true skill is understanding which one is glass, huh. right? And there might be times where I have to drop a plastic work ball so I can yeah. catch a kid glass one mm -hmm. and vice versa, right? Right. I might have to drop a plastic kid ball to catch a work glass one. Right. And so for me, that, that imagery was really powerful in really thinking about like catching the things that are important. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what, if you drop a plastic ball, it didn't shatter. You can probably go pick it back up. You can go pick it back up. Yeah. Right. Or it bounced and someone else picked it up. True. Right? I mean, that's one of yeah. the tenets in Tiffany DeFu's book. She talks about drop the ball. Right? And her message is just like, you know what? Sometimes you just got to drop the ball. Huh. And it'll bounce and maybe someone else will pick it up. Or it'll bounce and you can pick it back up later. Right? But that notion that not everything is the end of the world if we don't catch it. Yeah. And I think that has provided me a lot of freedom and being able to be present where I am. I think that's the thing I struggle with the most as a seven mm -hmm. is staying present because mm -hmm. it's always like the next thing, the next project, the next activity, the next trip, yeah. whatever it is. Right. Yeah. And how to be present in the moment of what I'm doing and not be distracted by all the other things in life. Yeah. And truly being able to enjoy my children that way, enjoy my job, enjoy my friendships, whatever it is that yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. No, that's, I love that theory and it's so true in life. And I think as you get older, you start realizing what the glass balls really are for mm -hmm. you. Um, you know, we are true North technologies and it's, you know, find out what you value and go after those things. Yep. And the other things that are maybe important to other people don't have to be important to you. Mm -hmm. um, you can drop those. And you can't be everything to everybody. Yeah. Right? I well, mean, you, you you're can't. not a taco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you get that. <laughs> and I said it so serious. Wait, you did. You're not a taco. <laughs> it was very serious. We'll put that on your calendar, Renee. Oh, that's a good idea. I, we are jotting down famous quotes from me. <laughs> We are. We're we will working. be releasing a calendar. Stay tuned. <laughs> Might be coming in 2023. There will be an announcement. <laughs> Tear away desk calendar. You're going you're to want to watch for that. Some of the pages are going to be blank. Deal, Deal with, with it. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, we could talk forever, obviously, but I really appreciate you coming on the show today, uh, sharing about your businesses and your hopes for the future and your wisdom and laughter. So everybody, I really appreciate you tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.